Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, the beast is alive. But we're going to be killing two birds with one stone in this episode because we need to get some test miles on the vehicle, and at the same time, we've got a tyre comparison to do. So, let's get into it. So I'm not going to go into the details of this vehicle too much because we've covered that in the previous episode, click, click in the link above, but just to summarise, it's a Land Rover Defender 130, uh, it's got a 170 kilowatt hour battery pack, 80 of which is in the front here, um, we've got a, another battery pack underneath the back seats and the rest of the battery pack is where the fuel tank used to be underneath the um, rear. Uh, what else has it got? Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, all the usual knobs and whistles. It's got Vita L, which is uh, an interesting addition to our arsenal now with the conversions that we do. CCS rapid charging as well. Um, so let's have a quick look inside because that's now finished. You wouldn't have seen that in the previous episode. So let's have a look inside. Now inside, very luxurious, not like my Land Rover whatsoever. You've got leather seats, uh, there's a sat-nav and infotainment system here. It's uh, got wireless charging for your phone, which we've put in. Some really nice things we've added to this to give it a little bit of luxury. Um, not least of which, cruise control we've got now as well. Air conditioning, as I said before. Um, what else? Oh, air ride suspension. So we've got a self-leveling air ride suspension because this is going to be carrying a number of motorbikes in the back. So when they go in, you don't want the vehicle like that with a load. So it, it self-levels itself, which is a really nice feature as well. So yeah, in, inside, very nice indeed. Even got heated seats. Now, final thing on the summary of the vehicle is obviously this is where the electric motorbikes are going to be mounted. And, you know, we've got to uh, paint the bed uh, in some bed liner paint yet as well. Uh, but... More importantly, this is where the charge sockets are for the uh, bikes. So you've got two charge sockets here, and there's also two domestic sockets inside the vehicle as well. It's a, a 10 kilowatt V2L system, that's vehicle to load, which is quite a big, um, powerful V2L system. In fact, we're charging up a seven kilowatt um, charger on a Nissan Leaf uh, yesterday, just to do some testing on it. So. But that's what, not what this episode is about. This episode is going for a test drive and more importantly, doing a tyre comparison. So let's have a look at these tyres. Right, now before we go for a spin, let's do a summary of the tyres. So uh, we've got a few Land Rovers in the workshop and as luck would have it, we've got various different types of tyres that we can have a look at. So we've got the big, huge, chunky tractor tyres. These are Maxxis uh, Trepidors. I would say these are pretty much 100% off-road and they are rubbish on-road. And when I say rubbish, they're like driving on jelly and you've got this constant like ooh noise as you're driving along. These look fantastic, but on the road are awful. Then we've got the all-terrains, the, I would say, most popular tyre that you normally see on Land Rovers, I reckon. So this is uh, the tyre of my Land Rover Defender. So BF Goodrich, all terrains. I would say these are kind of 50-50 road, off-road tyre. And then we've got the trail terrains. So these are again BF Goodrich tra trail terrains. I'd say these are more like 80% road, 20% off-road, which, you know, and they've got a, you know, aggressive look to them. I mean, uh, this is more aggressive again. This is very aggressive. Um, and then just lastly, we've got totally road. So this is a 100% road tyre. This is uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUV tyres. So road tyres, mostly road tyres, 50-50 road off-road, 100% off-road. And the test comparisons we're going to be doing, so we're going to be no, doing no, you know, what are they like off-road, on mud, etc, etc. I'm not interested in that. What I'm interested in is how much energy it takes to do a certain distance with these four tyre types. And this test is going to be applicable whether or not it's electric, diesel or petrol. Now we're going to try and standardise the comparisons as much as possible. And um, the reason why I've got a tape measure in my hand is because one of the things we're going to standardise is the height of the vehicle. Because obviously with these big, huge, massive tyres on, the height of the vehicle is going to be increased. And whenever you increase the, the frontal area of a vehicle, you're effectively increasing its drag as well. So because this has got air suspension, we can drop it down. So I'm going to measure and make sure that the height of the vehicle is exactly the same, no matter which tyre we're, we're testing. Uh, secondly, 
tire pressures are all going to be the same. Thirdly, the route is going to be the same. So we're going to drive exactly the same route in exactly the same way on the same day as well. So this is going to be a long day, isn't it, Tim? Should be. Um, I think that's it, is it? Any other things we need to normalise for, Tim? Same so, driver. Same driver, yeah, exactly. So, and same weight, exactly. As, as much as possible, we're trying to have a fair comparison, if you like, between all four tyres. And we're going to measure the amount of energy it takes to do that distance. And we'll know that distance once we've done the first route. I think it's around about 50 miles. We're going to measure the energy it takes to do that off the battery management system. So a very accurate uh, measurement of the amount of energy it takes to do the journey. So, I think we're ready to go, Tim. Let's go. Let's go, right. Right, so I'm just gonna take a quick note of how much energy is in the pack at the start. So this is the Maxxis tires test, and there is 156.7 kilowatt hours in there. So 156.7, okay. Test one, let's go. Right, now we've started our little test, and uh, I should say that we're desperately trying to keep at the same speed. Tim's also got his speed on his phone down there, just to double check and keep an eye on it as well. So we're gonna try and do around about 55 miles an hour continuously, where we can, obviously. Uh, no overtaking, just like keep it at around about 55 miles an hour. What's your first impressions of these Maxxis tires then? Noisy. <laughs> They're terrible, aren't they? Oh, I can't believe it. I'm amazed how bad they are. I can see you're struggling with the wheel. It's like keep it on the road. It's not just the driving on jelly thing that's getting to me. It's the, I, I can't imagine Tom and Perra driving from Amsterdam with this, with these tyres on. Or even driving back to Sweden. Oh, it should be impossible. I mean, they, let's just, you know, be honest. They're going to be fantastic tyres off-road. And if you're really stuck in the mud, these are the tyres you want. But unless you're doing that, yeah. these are not for the road. No, no question about it. Not on the Sundays are these road tyres. We've only been driving for a couple of miles and already and it's starting to drum into your head. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah, we're doing what, 50 miles an hour here? Yeah, 50 miles an hour. And I go around this corner, it gets worse. As the tyres load up, yeah. it gets worse as well. Right, we're coming up to our first roundabout now, Tim, so hold on. Hold on tight. These are like, you have to lean as well. These are like balloons. Oh my God, it's bad, isn't it? Oh, I should have bought my seasick tablets. <laughs> Right, that's 50 miles done on these, and that's enough for any man with these tyres on, because that was noisy. <laughs> so let's swap them onto the uh, all-terrains now. Right, so after a uh, Formula One style pit stop there, Tim, of what, half an hour <laughs> changing those wheels and tyres, we're now on the BF Goodrich all terrains. And you can probably, hopefully, hear the difference out there because there's no ooh going on all the time. There's a huge obvious difference, isn't there? God, They're a lot quieter and you can feel it a lot more sure footed on the road. It's so nicer to drive. It's smoother. It's like driving on glass or grass, actually. It's like driving on grass compared to before, like driving on cobbles or something like that. Much nicer. But let's see what the effect is of the range. Now, in case anybody's wondering why I'm not using cruise control to control the average speed, it's not something you can use in mid Wales very often. There's, uh, you know, there's too many tight corners, you come up against traffic now and again. 
it's not like driving on a motorway. But I have used it now and again, but just on the long straights. It's a nice feature, I do like it. It's a very comfortable Defender. It yeah. is, that's what I was thinking. It's, uh, like I say, 55 mile an hour. It's nice and comfy, isn't it? Comfort and Defender yeah. is not something I normally put in a sentence together. And it's quiet. I think it helps the fact that I've got more leg room because there's no clutch, there's no handbrake rubbing into the back of my leg here. I've got a bit more room over here because the transmission tunnel is, you know, not gone, but it's definitely smaller. It's just comfortable. Right, ready for uh, roundabout test number two in the all terrains? Yeah. And it can't be as bad as the Maxis ones. Right, let's see, see what the lean factor is. <laughs> Definitely better. Oh, that was a lot easier, wasn't it? I wouldn't say it's uh, Formula One territory. No. That was pretty good. That's all right. Yeah. Another Formula One record stop for uh, changing tyres. Uh, it took so long, it's now dark. So we're now on the BF Goodrich trail terrains. Yep. Trail terrains, yeah. And already, uh, the main difference I can feel after just a mile or so is I can't hear any road noise hardly at all now. Yeah, little a, bit, but. No, there's very little noise off the tyres. Quieter there? again from the yep. uh, all terrains, yep. aren't they? but not the same amount of improvement as there was from oh. the big novelist. No, no. I'd say marginal improvement on road noise yep. so far. So these being the BF Goodrich trail terrain tyres are more like 80% road, 20% off-road, aren't they? Yeah. Now, for 99.99% .99 of 4x4 owners out there, that's probably fine. I mean, these were, these would be absolutely fine on you know gravel tracks and things like that i wouldn't necessarily take them over a wet muddy field let's say but i think for nearly most applications of 4x4 owners these tires are absolutely fine so it's uh, the bf goodrich trail terrain's turn for the roundabout test <laughs> your highlight of the day is highlight it? of my day yeah <laughs> Well, that's not difficult considering all we've been doing is changing wheels, so. And driving the same journey. <laughs> what were we on now? Oh, I don't know. I've lost Seven count. times? Uh... Right, here you go. Put a smile on your face. It's roundabout test time. BF Goodrich, ta trail terrain, take one. Oh, oh, what a grip. It's all right. Not leaning as much as I normally do. No, that's good, that. You're right, though, it does feel very blanded. Yeah. Impressed with the trail terrains. Right, that's the trail terrains done. Final set to test now in the Michelin Pilot Sports. Right then, Michelin Pilot Sports. Yep. I don't know what's sporty about them, mate. Eh? It's not, definitely not sporty in the Land Rover. Sport SUV, isn't it? But uh, having said that, these are lower profile. So the previous tyres uh, were 16 inch wheels. These are 18 inch wheels, but they're still 265, but 60 profile on 18 inch rims. And they're obviously 100% road tyres. Now, of course, there are some things which are a big no-no if you want to maximise your fuel economy doesn't matter if it's petrol, diesel or electric. And that's putting things like bull bars on a vehicle yeah. or roof racks. Spotlights. Spotlights, uh, exoskeleton roll cage, wider wings. All the things that are on this monster. All right, Tim, it's that time again. The final test. It's the final roundabout. Diddly -doo. Right, for the last time tonight, here we go. Michelin Pilot Sports, around the roundabout. Oh, entry speed is high. Ooh. Oh, that is Formula One. 
Well, I don't know about that, but it's noticeably improved oh, that's on impressive. all of them. It's better, oh well. On a, on a scale of one to 10 impressive, it's pretty good. But yeah, definitely you feel that they're a little bit lower profile and they're 100% road tires. Okay, the results are in. Sounds like Eurovision, doesn't it? Yeah, nil poids. Uh, Max's trepidors, <laughs> nil poids. Um, so, yeah, results are in. We've been out testing now for, what, nearly five hours? I mean, it's been a long day, hasn't it? It has been a long day. We've done over 200 miles and we've done four wheel changes in that time That's as well. That's very true, yeah, my back's feeling that. Um, and it's 10 o'clock at night, I know that, and I'm very hungry. So I'm going to just uh, crack on with the results, if you don't mind. So, this, just to say what this isn't, this isn't uh, an efficiency test of the vehicle. This is an efficiency comparison of the tyres. So what we've done is we've taken the um, efficiency of the Maxxis, Maxxis Trepidors, uh, kilowatt hours per mile, and we've used that as the bench uh, line, if you like. That's why it's a zero down there. And then we put on the BF Goodridge All Terrains, which um, we felt was a lot nicer drive, quite frankly. It didn't have that horrible noise. And the efficiency of those was 20% better than the Maxxis Trepidors. That means that, that uh, be that uh, electric, diesel, petrol, doesn't matter. Those tyres would have got you 20% further down the road than the Maxxis Trepidors. Or to put it another way, your miles per gallon would be 20% better off if you were still using fuel, uh, petrol or diesel fuel that is. But putting on the BF Goodrich trail terrains increased the efficiency another 37%. So 37% compared to the Maxxis Trepidors. So again, you would go 30%, 37% further down the road, or your mile per gallon, if you're still using uh, liquid fuel, would be 37% better off. Now, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUVs were 43% better. So again, 43% further down the road compared to the Maxxis Trepidors. Um, so are you surprised by those results? Um, I kind of wasn't. I mean, I knew they would be better. I was surprised that this, the end result, if you like, this one over here was so high compared to that. But it kind of shows you, if you're going from an all off-road tire like the Maxxis Trepidor to a, a road tire, how much more efficient a tire can be and especially if you've got an electric vehicle, how much further you can go on range if you choose a you know, low rolling resistance tire. And as I said before, this applies to petrol and diesel as well. So if you are a diesel Land Rover guy and you're running around on some god awful off-road tires that are just going all the time, just remember guys, you're wasting a lot of fuel there as well. So. Um, as far as driving experience is concerned, um, I think Tim and I are both in agreement. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUVs were fantastic on the road, weren't they? They were, they were. But I thought that the trail terrain was probably your, your sort of middle of the road yeah. choice, bit of everything. That was a real nice tyre, I thought. If you're going to turn your Land Rover Defender into a road going weapon, um, then these are the tyres to go for. But if you're still going to use it as it was designed to be, uh, which is a little bit off-roady, getting dirty and muddy, then BF Goodrich trail terrains were really, really surprising on road. But I do quite a bit of off-roading, so I'm still going to stick with the BF Goodrich all terrains because, you know, they're my go-to tyre and they're really, really good. So there you go. Results are in. Mm. Happy with that? Yeah, ready for bed. Ready for bed and food, exactly. Right, I'm going to go and uh, it's well past Tim's bedtime and he needs his beauty sleep. So uh, on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.